Good afternoon, we are the owner of from Texas Women's University. My name is Brittany Rust, I'm the team lead, and these are my team members, Eduardo Urias, Mercy Obenigba, Avery Foreman, and Keely Chapman. We want to give a thank you to our faculty mentor, Dr. Rigby, and our NASA mentor, Dr. Easter. Our fall team research fabricated and tested glasses that emit blue wavelengths of light peripheral to the eyes. From the results, they concluded that blue light exposure did indeed increase alertness in morning trials. Specifically, electroencephalography, also known as EEG waveforms, were indicative of increased alertness after blue light exposure. Results were further validated using the psychomotor vigilance test, also known as the PVT developed by NASA. Here's Eduardo to summarize the background of our project. Circadian rhythm is the body's 24-hour internal cycle of physical and mental changes that influences essential body functions such as digestion, body temperature, and the sleep-wake cycle. Factors that influence circadian rhythm in space include the multiple sunrises and sunsets, stress stimuli during missions, and the non-conventional sleeping environment that astronauts experience aboard the ISS. Current solutions to some of these issues include caffeine consumption, uses of medications, and the Solid State Lighting Assembly, or SSLA. The SSLA is an ambient light system that provides inconsistent light exposure and non-uniform light intensity. Other limitations of the SSLA include that it is expensive and difficult to repair, and it also produces excessive environmental heat. The SSLA has a morning setting that emits blue and rich light and an evening setting that emits blue deprived light in order to influence the sleep-wake cycle. Having said this, uh, certain wavelengths of light will affect circadian rhythm and therefore alertness and sleep onset. Specifically, wavelengths in the blue and red spectrum are particularly influential on the production of melatonin, which is a hormone produced in the brain that promotes sleep quality and is regulated by receptors in the eyes. This means that uh, melatonin is directly inhibited by uh, light exposure to the eyes. On the right is a graph of typical melatonin secretion over a period of 24 hours on Earth. Shorter wavelengths of light in the blue spectrum are more likely to suppress melatonin production, while longer wavelengths of light in the red spectrum are less likely to interfere with melatonin. As you can see on the spectroscope reading to the left, the blue wavelength of light is approximately 440 nanometers, while the red wavelength of light is approximately 610 nanometers. Blue light exposure will promote alertness and wakefulness by inhibiting melatonin production, while red light exposure will promote relaxation and sleep onset by allowing for appropriate melatonin secretion when needed. Next is Mercy to discuss an overview of the problem we face this semester our solution and our associated design. Our problem was circadian rhythm desynchronization and microgravity results in delayed sleep onset along with decreased alertness and cognitive performance in astronauts. Our solution was a pair of non-invasive, drug-free, personalized light therapy glasses that emit blue light upon awakening and red light with an additional filter at bedtime. This slide demonstrates a graphic SOLIDWORKS rendition of the components we used to build our prototype. These include eight blue and red LEDs with four beats shown here, a USB Lylon Live Poly charger board, inductive charging composed of copper wiring and a charger board, a lithium ion polymer battery, an Arduino nano board, and frames with an adjustable attachment that filters wavelengths of light on the blue spectrum. This slide shows how our components were assembled to build our light therapy glasses prototype. Um, the eight red and blue LEDs can be shown at the top of the glasses. There's a button on the left side of the glasses that turns on the blue light, and a button on the right side of the glasses that turn on the red light. There's an adjustable head strap, an adjustable nose piece, and three different sizes of filtered lenses to accommodate different face shapes and sizes. Now here's Avery to give an overview of the code and introduce aspects of our testing protocol. We used the Arduino, as seen in the schematic on the left, and coded with C++ because it is user-friendly. The code, as seen on the right in its partial form, is designed to have a separate button for the blue and red light. 
The light will run for 30 minutes and then turn itself off when the therapy is complete. According to our research, 30 minutes is the optimal exposure time to elicit circadian realignment for both red and blue light. To test our glasses, we had two participants, one male and one female. They participated in a controlled sleep schedule designed to mimic the average astronaut sleep schedule for both for one week before testing started. They had six and a half hours of sleep per night and abstained from caffeine, alcohol, and daytime naps in order to not interfere with any of the physiological testing measures. Each participant had two days of control testing and three days of intervention testing. All the data from the control testing were averaged together and all the data from the intervention testing were averaged together. Each day, whether it was a control day or an intervention day, had data collected at three distinct intervals. The, the variables that were measured were taken with the EEG and the PBT. The EEG is a brain imaging procedure that detects and records cranial electrical activity, and the PBT is designed by NASA to test reaction times. As you can see on the left side of the timeline in the morning, the data were collected immediately upon awakening, after 30 minutes of blue light exposure, and one hour after the blue light exposure. The filtered lens was not worn during the morning protocol. And on the right side of the timeline in the evening, the data were collected upon arrival to the lab, one hour after arrival to the lab, but prior to red light exposure, and after 30 minutes of red light exposure. The filtered lens was worn during the evening protocol, and the participants went to bed once all the data were collected. For the days of control testing, the timeline remained the same, but the participants were not given any light therapy. Now here's Keely, now here's Keely with our testing variables. We placed 20 separate electrodes at specific distances apart on the scalp of each participant. Beta waves were measured via the frontal and central electrodes to assess cognitive arousal on both mornings and the evenings. Beta waves are high frequency, low amplitude waves that demonstrate alertness. As you can see, in the mornings, more beta wave activity was observed. It appears that 30 minutes of blue light exposure may indeed promote alertness. In the evenings, decreased beta activity was observed. It appears that 30 minutes of red light exposure may lead the participants to be in a more relaxed state. PVT is a reaction time test that is correlated with fatigue-related changes in alertness. A participant responds to a visual stimuli by pressing a button when a light randomly appears in front of them, and an average of multiple trials is calculated. The blue sections are results from the morning trials after blue light exposure. From the downward turn in the graph, we conclude that reaction time measured in milliseconds got faster, which indicates increased alertness. When compared to the control data, which is in black, we observed that blue light exposure was more effective in improving reaction times when compared to no intervention with the glasses. The red, the red sections are results after the evening trials of red light exposure. From the upward turn in the graph, we conclude that reaction time got slower, which indicates that red light may inhibit alertness. When compared to the control days, which are in black, we observed that red light was more effective in slowing reaction times before sleep when compared to no control data. So now here's Brittany to talk about our future direction and conclusion. Future directions for research and design include adaptation of frame measurements to suit individual morphology, custom fabrication of glasses frames to encompass electronic components as well as a cooling system, <coughs> Inclusion of an adjustable light plate, which can be adjusted for maximal retinal exposure, and more extensive testing using a longitudinal research design over the course of weeks, months, or possibly years. This includes testing the efficacy of light intervention on phase shift or non-24 hour work schedules. To summarize, circadian rhythm desynchronization can lead to slowed reaction times, poor performance, and decreased alertness. We developed a solution that is non-invasive and drug-free to help combat circadian rhythm desynchronization. Specifically, we developed glasses which emit blue and red wavelengths of light with a filter lens attachment which appear to increase alertness in the morning and help decrease alertness before bedtime. Properly applied light therapy glasses can help retrain circadian rhythm, improve reaction times, and encourage proper sleep onset and alertness. When compared to current solutions, such as the SSLA, our glasses may be advantageous in terms of light intensity, cost of upkeep, scheduling, 
like color, thermal output, and personalization. Here are our acknowledgments and our references. We would be happy to take your questions at this time. We were actually trained by medical professionals who um, are EEG technicians. So we were able to borrow the equipment from an EEG lab laboratory. Um, we were trained in how to use new prep to scrub the skin. Uh, we were trained in what's called the 1020 international system. So that's a system for placing electrodes on the scalp and measuring. And we were able to use conductive paste and then check the impedance to make sure that all of the electrical signals were proper. On the, when you just came up with the design for the LEDs, the own glasses, uh, and did you all do any calibrations uh, to make sure that you didn't exceed a certain uh, what, uh, intensity level that could be an ICP hazard? Yeah, of course, we want to consider safety um, as a primary concern. So all of the research that we had, um, that Eddie has compiled for us as a research lead, um, everything that we looked at said that a thousand lux at approximately an inch from the eye had um, no concerns as far as safety. Um, now, of course, being exposed to very bright light for a long time may have some implications as far as health is concerned. Um, but both of our participants had no complaints as far as the brightness. Um, they were able to participate in activities as normal. Um, and uh, all, of course, all of our research backs up that the intensity was at a safe level. Okay. And then uh, you mentioned about the, the thermal problem Light. Well, any light's going to have net heat, right? So the the uh, solid state lighting assembly is, is installed into a bulkhead, into basically the structure, and the heat is removed through the through the structure for that lamp. Uh, for uh, in microgravity application uh, for glasses, since there is no uh, conduction of heat um, to, to, to air in microgravity, uh, what are your thoughts on um, you know how you would uh, re remove heat from the LEDs uh, for your sensitive to sit there uh, on the frame uh, for your patient. Definitely. Um, so, if at, all, if, if at all possible, when we custom fabricate glasses frames to encase the components, that would come along with a cooling system which could be tested. Um, I believe that there are some water type cooling systems that can go along. Obviously, we would pick the one that is a best fit for the size of what we're talking about. You know, these have to um, be comfortable to wear and not too bulky. So I, I believe we would go through probably a couple different cooling systems to test the efficacy against the battery and the LEDs before we would pick one that would definitely stick with for the glasses. Okay, and the last question, when your subjects went to the test facility, uh, did they go at, uh, you know, when the sun was down, so that, in other words, the, the, the fact of uh, walking outside the sun, when the sun is up would not affect their um, circadian uh, treatment? Uh, yes, in the morning time before they got there, it was actually still dark. Um, the sleep schedule that they were on for the six and a half hours of sleep, and at the time in the year that we were testing, um, they woke up at approximately 6 a.m. and got to school within 15 minutes or less, and so it was definitely still dark out. Um, when we took the actual data for our EEG readings, it was in a dark room with their eyes closed that we did not have any interference. Um, and so we controlled for as many variables as we could with human subjects. I just have a question, some clarification. So this glass of the astronaut are gonna wear it to, to go to sleep, so they're gonna sleep with them on? Uh, no, so the red light therapy function is designed for them to be able to use 30 minutes in advance of their sleep onset. So we were able to test this with our participants and they were able to do things like wear the filter with the red light therapy and still do crosswords, read a book, um, work on their computer or on their phone. Um, so this is designed after we talked with our NASA mentor um, to not interfere with the um, mission critical tasks that they'll be doing. So it was to be done when they have some downtime. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so talking back about safety, uh, is there a reason that why there's no like a uh, adjustable automated uh, intensity uh, levels? So for example, your blue light and red light are 
stable the same uh, combination the whole time, right? Uh, would that not make it uncomfortable? Uh, is there not a possible way for the light intensity to go up and down based on, you know, like the duration of the day or the Personal hours? comfort yeah. levels as in adjustability. So we did discuss that as an option, and it is possible to code that for our lights or to choose dimmable lights. However, after discussion with our team and the research that we found, we chose the intensity and wavelength that we did specifically to elicit the circadian rhythm alignment that we were looking for. So the intensity that we found, um, it, it has to be above 1,000 lux in order to elicit that type of response from blue light um, in a consistent manner. And so for adjustability's sake, while we could include a, a dimmer, um, participants both said that it was a comfortable level and it would not guarantee us the same results. Yes, you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, I just have one question. How long does the battery last before it needs to be Absolutely. So um, our battery that we're using now will last four to six hours, is that correct? So at 30 minutes twice a day, you're looking at at least two or three days before you would have to recharge this pair of glasses. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Yes, of course. All right, thank you team.